Hello and welcome back to Mr. Excalibur. My name is Arthur and today we are looking at the uh, Darkstone Armory Knight Bastard Medieval Sword. We have to remember that. There's a lot of names all in one to describe this thing. Knight Bastard Medieval Sword. Knight Bastard Medieval Sword. Um, say it with me again. Knight Medieval... Say it, I got it wrong. Knight Bastard Medieval Sword. Um, I might just call it their Medieval Bastard Sword just for short. So if you want to know the whole name, go to back to the beginning of the video. Um, now I will admit something very interesting about this, this sword. Now, by now you guys already know that I am a fan of Dark Sword Armory. I, I do like their products. I think they're solid, they have a great fit and finish, they have a great just completed look to them. They're nice and solid. You know, this one, not a rattle. Um, I will say that this one did come uh, with its scabbard, and the scabbard has a nice fit to it. Now this has been oiled, so it's a little bit slippery. But we did have we did have that familiar problem again. So for those of you saying, "Aha! See, they still haven't fixed it." Well, on this one, you apparently are right. Um, this has actually been the first one in three models that I looked at previous to this that had some pretty nice form-fitting scabbards, and this one has that rattle in it. But, as I've said before, that's not really a big issue with me. It's a nice scabbarded whole sword, and, you know, I really like them. I really love the, ring, the real rain guard that they put on these swords. So, anyway, that's the scabbard. The sword. This is an interesting story behind why I even decided to get this one in particular. I will admit, fully right now, that although it's a Dark Sword Armory sword, and um, I generally like their models, this was not a design that I was particularly interested in. I just kept on seeing on their website, and I was like, nope, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> and here is, you know, I guess the influence of social media, YouTube, what have you. There was not one, not two, but three, but four people who gave some reviews on this particular model, a Dark Sword Army model, and all of them were glowing reviews. Now two of them, as you guys will see, were just cutting videos, but in the comments down below, the people who had posted those cutting videos really, um, really kind of, you know, talked up this particular sword and their experiences with it. So while they may not have had, you know, they may not have verbalized it in the video themselves, they certainly did down in their comment section. The other two videos have been done much more recently, in fact I believe just last year or, or very close to it, and they both looked at this um, from different points of view, gave pretty extensive reviews, I'm going to be including some footage from those reviews later on, and they both gave this thing a glowing view. They did some cutting with it. They did some analysis of it, how it feels. Um, both of them, as I'll talk about later, they ordered this with a sharpened edge. And they were pleased with what they got. They cut through pool, noodle, pool noodles and tatami mats through them. Um, they were really impressed. Now, for me, this sword, I mean, it handles wonderfully. The, the balance on this thing is unreal. This has got to be the best balanced Dark Sword Armory model I have ever seen as of right now, which is roughly middle of May of 2021. So um, that's what I'm, I'm recording this. So I mean, the way they've got this handle out here, it's really nice. But here's my problem with it. The blade just seems kind of short. I mean, it literally looks like if you hacked off, you know, half the handle, move the pommel up here, this would make a great arming sword. One-handed arming sword. And it, this is actually the, the true meaning of a bastard sword, where someone came along and said, you know what, we really like the design of this sword, but we want more power and want more leverage. So what do they do? They keep the blade, they keep the hilt, they keep the pommel, 
they just extend out the handle. And it really looks like what they did with this design. Now, this is also an example of what I call DSA's mix and match reality swords. And then, yes, I just made up that term. DSA has every once in a while been derided as not making very historical builds. I, um, I disagree with that. Instead, what I think what DSA does is, I think what they do is they look at a particular era and they'll look at a particular style of sword that they are interested in making. And then what they do is they look up pommels they like, handle styles they like, hilts they like, blade shapes they like. And then kind of like those books, you remember as a kid where you would, you know, flip the animals and you had uh, a head, a torso, a middle, like a waist section, and then legs, or maybe just three, the head, body, and legs, and you could flip around and make weird animals out of it? That's what DSA did here. It's not to say any one of these pieces are, is historically inaccurate, just may never have seen them all on one sword. So, to say that, you know, oh, it's not a historical model, I think it's total crap. Um, I think it is historical. I think, you know, I've got some pictures that you guys will see later of swords roughly from this era, and you're going to see examples of the pommel, the hilt, the handle, and the blade style. Well, la -ti da I wonder where they got the ideas from. And they just said, we like that pommel, that handle, that that uh, hilt and that blade shape, and we're going to put them all in one sword. We're going to call it the 15th century. Sorry, I always want to say 15th century. They didn't call it that. Uh, it, is, it is the Knight Bastard Medieval Sword. That's what they got here. So um, it cut really nice. As usual, with DSA swords, I like everything about them. I just wish they would just be ever so slightly more sharp. And I don't think that's necessarily an unreasonable request. Um, I've had, after this one comes out, um, I've had several swords from Rona Katana, which in many cases are almost half as expensive as Dark Sword Armory, and those swords come wicked sharp. Now, some might argue, they say, well, DSA's swords really are meant to be, you know, historically sharp. I understand that. I just, I guess I am kind, of, am kind of influenced by modern culture and, you know, katanas and all that kind of stuff, and I would like it just to be a little bit sharper. But, that being said, in the cutting footage, you guys will see, this thing did not disappoint. And in the cutting footage that other people did, it did not disappoint. It cut, it done, it cut wonderfully. And um, I talked to a couple people, one of which is one of the reviews that I'm giving you guys some clips of today, and I said, you know what, you sold me. I I'm going to take a look at this. And even though overall, from an aesthetics point of view, the design of this thing is just kind of... Does that all fit together? I suppose. You know, it's kind of like the elephant head with a tiger body with the lion legs. Um, okay. But overall, you know, that's just kind of a, a witty criticism. Quite honestly, I don't really have anything negative to say about it other than my own stylistic preferences. And, you know, this thing is really cool. If you guys are looking for you know, a really quick uh, medieval era sword that you can you know, just really just whip around. And that's not something I get to say with a lot of DSA swords. Everybody knows that they tend to be a little on the weightier side. I like that, but when you feel this, you're, you're going, this is a DSA sword? It is, and it did very well. So guys, stick around, take a look at the unboxing, we're going to be taking a look at that. We're also going to be taking a look at some possible historical source material that they got from making this. A couple um, uh, pictures from DSA on when the sword was being constructed, nice view of that nice beefy tang that people are always, you know, questioning. And um, also some cutting footage, some previously recorded footage for some other people who did some reviews. So. 
I liked it. I love it. It's another DSA piece that really did well. And um, if it's something that you know you're looking and going, I like the look of that. I think there's enough evidence to say out there in the internet that it's a pretty good product. So um, take a look and um, look them up. Fun one. We'll see you guys next time. Bye for now. So here we are unboxing the Knightly Bastard Medieval Sword from Dark Sword Armory. And is typical. Um, it's shipped here, I'm in the United States, and this one is shipped from Canada. Usually takes a little bit and a little bit of money to get it shipped here, uh, which is just fine. And here is the rather sparse <laughs> amount of shipping you have. You, of course, you have the sorting cased in, in saran wrap. Uh, then you have all the merch that uh, they tend to put in with, including some coupons and some stickers and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, the sword, of course, comes cocooned, wrapped up in all of this. Um, I will say it does keep it kind of safe. The nice thing is the sword is actually inside the scabbard. This one did have the rattle, as I mentioned in the summary. Um, but I could feel that it, it was still secure at the top. So it had actually a nice fit right there at the top, which was kind of interesting. Um, as always, um, DSA swords do come with some oil on the swords. Now, I tend to wipe that stuff off because I'm going to be actually handling it quite a bit. I'm going to be seeing how it does. A little note here about oiling swords. Um, by now, a lot of people have seen my videos and have seen me, you know, um, uh, put WD-40 on them after I finish cutting and stuff like that. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, in if you're not going to store the sword for any particular length of time, there's no real reason to put any kind of heavy amount of oil on it. Just make sure it's clean of anything that you've been cutting with it. Um, so just kind of a, a, a tip from someone who's been around swords for a very long time. One thing I immediately could tell when I got the sword out of the box was it is just as maneuverable as what you'll hear people um, say in the various reviews that I've in, in, included clips of here. Tested a little bit of its flexibility, flexible as advertised. It's very solid, no rattles. Everything was nice and tight fitting. By the way, it remained that way even after I did some cutting with it. Decided to do the paper test cutting because people always wonder, well, are these swords actually sharp? The answer is yes, they are. And you can see here, I am not sawing. I'm literally just pushing the, uh, the sword through the paper. Now, once I start getting here, I am doing a little bit of pushing, but not a lot. It's, it's really cleaving it quite nice. Some people say that paper test cutting really isn't that much of a test of how sharp the blade is. Uh, I disagree. I think it's actually what I would call a nice preview of how uh, sharp the sword may in fact be. So just as kind of a, a hint there. Continue to take a look at it and see how straight it was. It was straight. And so, you know, everything coming out, coming out of the box here with DSA's Night Bastard Medieval Sword seemed to be pretty good, pretty, you know, on par with what I have now come to expect from DSA. So just some up close look at it. Again, some changes here from what you may have seen in previous footage. Um, the reviews that I've included here today uh, are actually much more recent, so you may not actually see it. But in some past pictures, we've seen the, the leather around the handles be very bulky. You don't have that nice double hourglass shape of the handle. Uh, some up close look at here of the polish, the fit and finish, um, how the hilt is matched up with the sword. There's a little bit of space there, but again, that there's a, that's always open for debate as to how cinched up that should actually be. No goop down the, uh, down the hilt. There's the P-block at the end of this particular style of pummel. 
uh, which is kind of nice. It's a little rustic at the end, but actually it fits with this design. So overall, um, some good impressions and you know what I've come to expect with the exception of the scabbard. I, w I will say I was a little put off that this wasn't an another nice fitting scabbard as I come to expect for them. But overall, everything looked pretty good right out of the box for this example from ESA. There are all kinds of footage that people do of swords. There is the what I call the OO footage where we basically just look at it and you know it's like, "Oh, look what I got for Christmas." Then there is this kind of footage where we see an individual just showing some cutting. He's just uh, cutting through a, a milk bottle here. And um, there's, there's no commentary with it. It's one of the reasons why I like to kind of hunt down some of this footage and include it all here together. Uh, so we get kind of a nice overall look at what has been done concerning this model. This was actually done uh, a couple of years ago by this gentleman. Um, who's obviously into a little bit of a cosplay or some fantasy role-playing or something like that and um, just showing some cutting of it I encourage you guys to actually look at these reviews I've got them linked down below in the comment section and take a look at some of the comments that these guys have made about these swords when people have asked about them because obviously they didn't say anything in the review but people did ask about them and they did comment on it um, in the comment section down below this person actually typically does gun reviews but he decided to take this sword out for a test drive and this is another just kind of very singular um a little bit of ooh ah oh and you know cutting of you know one bottle here but you know it's someone who decided to take the time and show it now this is what appears to be a pretty big guy and the sword looked very very quick and lithe in his hand and um that's not far from what other people have you know have have said in the past now this is the first of actually two really extensive reviews that were done about the sword just very recently so this is these are reviews of the current iteration of this sword from DSA. And this guy starts right off the bat by cutting it, cutting some pool noodles. And for those of you who've done any cutting with any, you know, various uh, material, you know that pool noodles are actually very hard to cut. I actually don't cut with them myself, but there's been plenty of people who have out there on the internet with various kinds of swords and they talk about how actually difficult it is. So, and one of the things that he he mentions in his review is that he didn't sharpen the sword. He asked for a DSA sharpening service and that's what he got, by the way. In the previous two cutting reviews, they mentioned the same thing. He dives right in here uh, concerning the scabbard that he really likes it. He, he actually thinks that for DSA, this is actually one of their, their highlights and the fact that you get this very nice, clean, simple, but rather nice looking scabbard. Uh, leather, he mentions how nicely it fits. He, he makes a rather um, <clears throat> lascivious comment about how uh, easy the sword fits, but not, uh, not, not too, uh, too slippery, but just uh, quote unquote, tight enough. Wah, wah. And, um, <laughs> Don't worry, I've commented plenty on this guy's review and complimented uh, his review of this sword, which I, which I really liked. Um, but he, uh, he really does kind of go on about the fact that, you know, it's a nice scabbard and you get one. And the fact that there are, you know, there are uh, companies out there that are, you know, twice as expensive but you get you, you don't get a scabbard and you know i've gone on about that when it comes to other companies as well his real look at the blade um is just he really just has a, a good overall review of it he liked how it was polished he liked how it was sharpened he liked how the handle fit he really didn't have anything negative to say about the sword whatsoever 
And so this was really quite a, a glowing uh, review. I found it very interesting, though, that this review had on it a couple of people, a couple of DSA naysayers who said, oh, it's a crap sword, it's a crap company. And then when asked, you know, why do you think that is, they didn't have a response, which is, you know, it always, every once in a while, when you, when you have these products by, especially by DSA, being uh, promoted and being said very I'm very happy to include Gentleman's Choices um, review of this sword in this review. And he says he, he really does give a very honest look at this sword. Now, typically in the past, for those of you who have followed him, he's typically done katanas, but he's also looked at some other European swords. A sword of this type was kind of his first as far as a you know a medieval sword, a really two-handed kind of weapon like this. And he goes on about how it was constructed, um, kind of confirming a lot of what DSA has said over the years about how it's made, 5160 steel made from, you know, pounded out from bars and actually forged in their shop. Um, he's very complimentary as far as the fit and finish of everything. And then he does some cutting. And this is tatami mat cutting, folks. Now, one thing that's important here to note is that in his review, he notes that he asked for it sharpened. He got it sharpened. He didn't sharpen it any more than it already was. He found it very well balanced. He really liked how the sword would, would rip around and um, really can move. And he made some really nice clean cuts out of some of these double tatami mats. And so he uh, he really went to town on some of these. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I am giving kind of the highlights. Um, but I, I really appreciated uh, how he went through and reviewed this sword. He was very honest about, you know, this isn't his primarily martial art. But, you know, he... Uh, he got some really good cuts and the thing delivered and you know what he has actually uh, responded several times on some of my other reviews saying yeah DSA products they've come a long way and he really makes some really really nice cuts here on uh, on using it and it's you know it's a factory edge I wanted to include some pictures here so we get an idea of perhaps where some of the inspiration came for this sword. And we'll especially look at, in this picture, the second one down. We get an idea of that very long spindly blade with a fuller and possibly even inspiration for the, um, for the, uh, for the, the pommel with the peen block at the end. Take a look at this picture. Look at the very top, and then the second one down. Look familiar? Yeah, there are some historical examples from this time period, roughly, that we can definitely see as possible inspirations for where the sword came from. But this is something we have to keep in mind. We look at these and go, okay, so this is where we got it from. Now, what we have to do is we have to imagine, this is what the folks over at DSA, and for that matter, anybody making European swords, has to imagine, what did these swords look like fresh out of the blacksmith's shop? Because look at these, they have, they have decayed, their, their handles have rot, rotted away. Uh, here's a really good example right there in the center of that, um, actually the previous picture, the upturned handle. Uh, here's you know, a very long blade. There you go, with a, with a fuller down the middle. What we have to imagine when looking at how these swords are being recreated today is it's not so much the, the the pommel shapes or the blade shapes or even the the cross guard shapes of where they came from we have to look and see how these things must have looked brand new off the shelf now here we're looking at something that's been debated for many years and that is the thickness of dsa's tangs well there you go this model this sword and this is how they're doing it. Um, 
that's a completed handle. Actually, I think I got these a little bit out of order, but that's okay. The next one shows handle going on. Sure enough, nice solid tang. So it is my turn to cut with this thing. Now I have to say, this thing almost was disturbingly maneuverable. Um, this sword weighs a little over three pounds, and yet it is a testament to what happens when you design a sword and it is so maneuverable, it's almost hard to control. It, it, I mean, you, you kind of tips the balance between well, how really balanced do you want this thing? The point of balance on the sword was maybe three inches off the hilt. Maybe. That's probably being a little generous. And it just felt wonderful to move around. Um, if you're not somebody who has a particularly great amount of upper body strength or you know, working on some skill with your arms and stuff, this sword really is nice because it's so well balanced that the weight of it is almost completely negated. Um, it had a great amount of point control. It indexed wonderfully. For me, the blade was and felt a little short. I like something extending away from me a little bit more. So I will admit that, but that's really kind of just an extension from my aesthetic um, I, I I don't particularly like how the sword looks, but again, that is a opinion that is completely divorced from the functionality of this sword. It really was quite nice. Now, if you want an example of bad edge alignment, there you go. And I was actually trying to do that on purpose, going, okay, here's a milk bottle that normally you can just slice e you know, really easily. I want to see if it did anything bad to the sword. It didn't. But, you know, it's like, okay, let's just bash it again. Even with a razor sharp sword, a target as easy as these milk bottles is still, yeah, it's still not gonna shave. Now, let's try to do this the right way. There we go. So, you know, it's people say, oh, you can be able to slice through a milk bottle even, you know, when bad things happen. Well, that's not necessarily the case because um, this is always fun. Well, swing and miss. I'm trying to avoid hitting that box. I know, I know, I know. I need to get a proper sword stand. Will I ever do it? Oh, the world may never know. It's kind of like the mystery of the Tootsie Pop. And then that one goes down. This one was fun. This was a good hit. Now, if you're wondering if this thing's sharp, yeah, it's sharp. Now, this one kind of was interesting. Uh, this is a rather solid juice bottle. These things are not quite as easy. You really got to have your edge alignment correct and be honest with you, have at least a decently um, sharp sword. The top of that thing went flying, and it was only by the mural mental that it went way over. Took the top off that one, that was quick. I was not expecting that one to go down. Because that one was like, hmm. It's one of those heavy ones that usually just go kind of splat. Now these generally do go splat because they're so heavy, especially around that neck. And this one, well, you can see the top flies off. <laughs> All right, whatever it's made of, 5160 or you know, whatever they make the swords out of, probably is 5160, high carbon spring steel. But whatever it is, make sure you clean it off. As I mentioned before, WD-4 is not necessarily a lubricant, but it does clean off the sword as far as getting rid of all the muck that was inside those juice bottles. So oil it up so you have to play with for another day.